So it would seem, guys, that North Korea are at it again. Is this video going to get demonetized for saying the words North Korea in the first 10 seconds? Maybe. Find out on the next episode of Kira Complains About YouTube Monetization. So cryptocurrencies, everyone loves them, of course, especially on my channel. North Korean crypto thefts target Japan, Vietnam, Hong Kong. Study finds Japan's 721 million loss accounts for 30% of global total since 2017. According to the Japan External Trade Organization, the $721 million stolen from Japan by North Korea hackers is 8.8 .8 times greater than the value of North Korea's exports in 2021. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. That's crazy. Now, if you don't know anything about this, I've done so many videos about North Korea. Basically, they have a state-sanctioned hacker group, like most countries do, of course. Uh, this one in particular has gone by many names though they typically refer to as Lazarus. Essentially, North Korea have funded and trained these people from the jump to become a hacker group, an elite hacker group. And they've been doing some wild shit since I think like 2012. There's been hacks on South Korea, repeatedly corporations and po politicians. There's been hacks at the same time in America. Uh, they've obviously stole a whole bunch of cryptocurrency, tried to steal like vaccine data and things like that. They were attributed a hack on Sony uh, right around the time that that movie came out that was, I've never seen it, it was about uh, assassinating Kim Jong-un or whatever. But in recent years, what they've been doing is mostly just stealing cryptocurrency because why would you not? They steal crypto and then they send it to whatever Tumblr is currently popular. It used to be Tornado S. And then they just take the money and they go and fund whatever the fuck they're doing, probably nuclear weapons or something. So it's amazing that cryptocurrency is funding North Korea's uh, nuclear arms. But here we go. Let's read. From Tokyo, North Korea is using cyber attacks to target Japanese cryptocurrency assets. Hacker groups affiliated with North Korea have stolen $721 million from Japan since 2017, according to a study by a UK-based compliance specialist. That is equal to 30% of the total of such losses worldwide. I don't know if that means such losses in terms of from Lazarus, which will put them at, you know, over $2 billion of stolen cryptocurrency, or whether they mean losses in total. It surely can't be losses in total in crypto because it's, it's way more than that. So it must just be from North Korea. Pyongyang is believed to have targeted the crypto assets of other countries to obtain the foreign currency that it uses for its missile program. So I guess questions answered there. This could in turn threaten the security of Asia. Yep. Elliptic, which conducted the analysis on behalf of Nikki, which is this website. I don't know anything about this website. So of course, take everything with a pinch of salt. Just reacting to this, which by the way, I've literally looked into the accounts and everything on the, on the blockchain of Lazarus when they've done hacks, such as when they stole, what was it, like $540 million from uh, Axie Infinity, the most popular, at least then, cryptocurrency NFT game via and exploiting their Ronin bridge. So the hack stuff is completely true. They have technology that tracks and identifies money transfers on the blockchain where cryptocurrency is traded. Yeah, it's just Block Explorer. Anyone can do this. It's a little bit fucky, basically, if you don't know what you're doing. But within a couple hours, you can pretty much teach yourself how to like just track money through uh, through blockchain. It's just keeping track of it if you don't have tools like there's some tools you can pay for out there that are pretty good but keeping track of it is a bit of a ball like so elliptic grouped by region businesses whose virtual currency was transferred to electronic wallets used by the lazarus group a north korean based hacker group this is the first case in which the financial losses inflicted by north korean hackers have been broken down by region or country that's true i've never seen this before so international bodies are waking up to the threat emanating from North Korea. In the joint statement adopted by the group of seven finance ministers and central bank governors on Saturday in Japan, top officials acknowledged the, quote, growing threat from illicit activities by state actors, such as the theft of cryptocurrencies, with North Korea's repeated missile launches in mind. Yeah, and I guess you'd have to be specifically, if you're in South Korea or Japan, you would have to be specifically keenly aware of this. Because they're the ones that, of course, North Korea randomly shoots missiles at. There's a crazy... I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a lot of sirens going off outside. Something's probably on fire again. The heat wave's been fucking brutal. So according to a report released on April 5th by a UN Security Council panel of experts, North Korea stole between 600 million and 1 billion in cryptocurrency in 2022. Holy shit. I think I remember reading an article about this. 600 million and 1 billion in just 2022. This is one hacker group, by the way. 
of course, one of the most sophisticated ones because it is literally a nation state hacking unit. And that was double the previous year's total. Elliptic estimated the figure at 640 million for 2022. North Korea employs two main types of cyber attacks, hacking and ransomware. Are they going to describe what ransomware is? Ransomware is basically like a virus on your computer, at least how I understand it. I'm going to give you the layman's explanation. I've never looked it up, but how I understand it, these ransomware would be some kind of malware or uh, virus on your computer that will essentially lock your computer or whatever, and it'll pop up and be like, we've caught you looking at porn, and if you send us Bitcoin to this address, then we'll not release the photos of your vinegar stroke face when you've just spaffed your beans over whatever weird hentai you're watching. Or, of course, we've got access to all your family data, or your bank account, and blah, 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 and we'll release it if you don't pay us money. Basically, we're holding your shit ransom, and if you don't pay, we'll not unlock your shit, and it'll just be broken, and we'll steal your stuff. And then, of course, hacking, it's just an umbrella term for gaining uh, access to something you're not supposed to access in an electronic sense. So Elliptic's analysis mostly uncovered hacking, stealing directly from cryptocurrency exchanges. Since it is uncertain whether a particular ransomware attack will be successful, North Korea is thought to be focusing its efforts on direct attacks on exchanges, as one successful hack can bring in a huge haul of crypto assets. True. Like I said, one single hack on the Ronin Bridge back in the day two years ago-ish, was $500 plus million dollars just in one go, just in one, one fell swoop. According to Elliptic, North Korea has stolen a total of $2.3 billion in cryptocurrency from businesses between 2017 and the end of 2022. Not a bad fucking return on investment, that. I guarantee it doesn't cost much money to house these people and train them. $2.3 billion in five years. Of that, Japan accounted for the largest portion, followed by Vietnam, 540 mil, and the US, 497 mil, and Hong Kong, 281. According to the Japan External Trade Organization, the 721 million stolen from Japan is 8.8 times greater than the value of North Korea's exports in 2021. So that's just obviously Japan's portion. So if you added everything up, between 2017 and 2022, the amount of money that, that North Korea has stolen in cryptocurrency is probably like orders of magnitude more than the actual value of their exports across those five years, which is a fucking mad concept. So I guess their primary export is, is cryptocurrency theft, which is fucking, that's crazy. It's thought that hackers have targeted Japan and Vietnam where cryptocurrency markets have expanded rapidly and many operators have lacked security. You could target anywhere. Most of the cryptocurrencies got lack security, let's be real. At least three cryptocurrency exchanges in Japan are thought to have been broken into by North Korean hackers between 2018 and 2021, according to a person familiar with the situation. One, Zyph, lost 7 billion yen, aka 51.4 million in 2018. The company has since shut down. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? It's difficult for North Korea to obtain foreign currency because of the international sanctions imposed on the country. Cyber attacks are thought to be a national strategy, meant to make up for the loss of foreign exchange from North Korea's greatly restricted coal trade. The scale activities by North Korean affiliate groups was first noticed around 2014. In addition to cyber attacks, these groups steal information on defense, healthcare, and other areas. Quote, the technology of the programs they use is higher than that of attack groups in other countries, said a cybersecurity expert. So I did a video um, that was basically chronicling the known attacks of Lazarus from the beginning. And I can't remember when it first was, but their first attacks were just ridiculously rudimentary, just, just shit, not very good. And then the progression over like five years was they got to the point where it was starting to really worry people. Because originally it was just a load of DDoS. They weren't really doing anything too crazy. The DDoS wasn't even that strong. It wasn't that good. And now obviously they're like just a big threat and they're a big problem in the world. It's like the one hacker group that everyone always brings up, Lazarus, especially if you're in anything related to cryptocurrency because they are the most prevalent, uh, or at least the, the most known about. But I remember distinctly there was one specific day. It had like a weird code name. It was called like Operation Black Rain or something, like some weird CIA shit or Soul Rain. It was something like that. I can't remember anyway. And it was, it was basically when they were doing like a joint attack against South Korea and a bunch of like federal buildings in the United States. And it went on for a while. At one point, they brought like a lot of South Korean business infrastructure to a fucking grinding halt. Like they shut down banks and stuff because it got that bad. If I'm remembering right, they also at one point bought a backdoor into Windows, Windows XP, I think it was, from a Russian agency that stole it from the NSA 
who didn't report the vulnerability to Microsoft for like five years. And then they used this vulnerability to basically get into thousands of computers in the world, hundreds of thousands of computers. And it brought the, N- the NHS, the National Health Service, which is the health service in the UK, to its knees, basically, because it stopped computers working. And if you've been in a hospital or doctor's office in the UK, you know everyone's using these old ass shitty computers. And if it wasn't for the fact that Microsoft found out about it after it had been stolen and released a patch, like it was like a week before or something, then that specific uh, piece of malware would have fucking wrecked like millions of computers. And then there was some famous hacker dude who found a vulnerability in it and managed to shut it off because it was infecting all these other computers. I've done too many videos on this shit, man. It's all just fragments in my brain, but I I do sincerely recommend you go find that video on my main channel and and give it a watch. I think it's super interesting. The international community has singled out Pyongyang for criticism. The US government has determined that North Korea was involved in a large number of ransomware attacks that took place worldwide in 2017. In October 2022, Japan's National Police Agency and other authorities singled out North Korea and called for caution among crypto exchange operators. The UN Security Council panel of experts repeated its warning in its 2022 report, saying the country continues to conduct hacking operations to bolster its nuclear and missile programs. It's fucking scary, that, isn't it? Cryptocurrency doing good for all, including North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. If the stolen cryptocurrency is used for military purposes, this poses a security threat. Yeah, true. Japan has strengthened its security by amending its Payment Services Act and other countries are taking similar steps. However, they have yet to respond to new technologies such as decentralized finance, aka DeFi, in which financial transactions conducted by programs on the blockchain or to support domestic crypto exchange operators in dealing with them. So obviously you're not really hacking DeFi generally. This, there are attacks uh, which you could definitely put under the umbrella of, of hacking, but it's not like a centralized exchange where everyone's money is just in one part. Or usually not one part, but like multiple wallets and they gain access to the exchange and just take out all that money. DeFi would be an attack on smart contracts usually and or specific transactions and things like that. So cross-border collaboration in the cryptocurrency industry is also critical. Hiroki Awai, president of Tokyo-based cyber consultancy, synced they said, we need to share threat information such as attack routes and malware that exploit them among the public and private sectors and industry associations in each country to raise the level of defense capabilities of each industry, including the financial sector. True, true, yeah. Also probably need to crack down on crypto exchanges, being able to hold tens or hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, while being fucking useless and not having good security. Because as we saw with the FTX situation, experts have looked at that and people who worked there and said, there was no security. They could have just lost tens of billions of dollars and they wouldn't have even known for a little while that they did because they had no clue where the money was. And they were just like writing passwords down on on notes and fucking sticking them to monitors and something like a 70s comedy movie. So yeah, there we go. Interesting story, I think. Lazarus is really interesting if you look into their history. And I suggest you do because they are going to still be relevant because it's not like they're sending SEAL Team 6 in to go and grab these motherfuckers. How do you get them? They're just in North Korea just doing this for years and then they're, they're not going to stop. It's only going to get worse and they're only going to get better because if, like I say, if you look into the history and look into the progression of the organization, they've, they've been killing it. They've been doing a good job. If you were rating these in terms of their efficiency, they're fucking S tier. Like you pulled, you got your waifu here and it's Lazarus Group, the North Korean hackers. You'd be quite happy with that one. Good pull. Don't know why I'm making that comparison, but whatever. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace out.